Good morning, everyone, and welcome to your Miracle Mindset Monday for this week. So remember, with a Miracle Mindset Monday, it is a generalized reading for the week. There are no personalized readings. If you're interested in your own personalized reading or in your own personalized Miracle Mindset, please feel free to go visit my website, AwakeningMiracles.org. So for this week, we have our generalized message. And this generalized message that I received for this week really was one word. All it was. It was presence. We are asked this week to really step into that at a much deeper level. We're asked to step into our presence. We're asked to step into the now. We're asked to, to, instead of stepping into doing things, we are really asked to step, to step into being that which we are. Yes, do we still have to go and, you know, go to work and do the things that, you know, are in front of us to do? Yes. But we can do it in a different consciousness. Instead of relating ourselves to that which we do, being, okay, I'm here at work and I am currently doing this, and just kind of being in that, mind, <clears throat> that mindset, instead, what we can do is we can be in that mindset of being. And being simply means I am a being of love. I am a being of light. I am a being of joy. I am a being of happiness. I am a being of contentment. I am a being of eternal love and joy and happiness and wisdom. I am. And that's where we can really step in to this beautiful week. This beautiful mindset of I am not what I do. Because all too often, if we really look at it, we really do believe we are what we do on a daily basis. I, you know, I am an essential worker. Where, well, now, instead of just being that which you are, now you are an essential worker. And, or maybe I am a volunteer. Well, instead of being all that you are, you have now limited yourself to volunteering. So we're really asked just to step into the present now we are asked not only to step into that present now, but to be fully present, not with what you are doing, okay? And I know that probably sounds really weird because it's, you know, well, Ron, if I'm not present with what I'm, what I'm doing, then what am I doing? And it's just about being in that presence of love, being in that presence of joy, and really activating that within yourself and just being I am as I am as I am present in this moment I bring my joy with me because remember happiness doesn't come from situations you bring your happiness to the situation which then makes the situation happy joy does not come from a situation your the joy you bring joy with you and then it makes that situation joyful and that's what we're asked to do this week is to step into that presence of mind so let's see what beautiful messages the cards have for us and first we're going to go here to the enchanted map and we're going to see what beautiful messages come from the enchanted map in concert with our message of presence of just being present. Oh, wow. Okay. I love it. So this is card number 34. And it is the spark card. I mean, just look at that. Absolutely beautiful. So there's always a little message she has above the card. So let's see what that little message is. And then we will continue. So you are a clear channel of divine creativity. 
So I think this goes so beautifully with, to, with the presence message because it's saying that when you are present, you are a clear channel because you're not encumbered with all those other thoughts. You're simply just being. You simply just are. And it gives you this beautiful way of just allowing the divine to flow through you instead of you saying, this is how it must go. This is how it must be. So as we step into presence, the truth of who we are, as we step into that, we become these clear channels for the divine to flow through us. You know, my prayer every morning is simply, Spirit, guide me, use me, move me in all ways. I am your faithful servant and I am open to your way. That's it. And I allow myself to simply be moved. Another great prayer could be, Spirit, what would you have me do? Where would you have me go? What would you have me say and to whom? It is breaking up the old program and the old patterns. When you say that and you really mean it, you really do become this divine channel. You become open to the possibilities. So let's see what other beautiful messages we have in concert with this card. Oh, beautiful. We have card number 23. Okay, card number 23, the Golden Palace. Card number 23. So as we step into that, we begin to see the divine abundance that's always there because there's always enough. And why is there always enough? There's always enough because you have stopped saying that you have to figure it all out. You, once again, you are now this divine channel. And the divine will make sure that whatever you need to continue along, you know, this pathway of I am, this pathway of presence, you will always have more than enough. You will always have more than what you need. And so it says the golden palace card represents good fortune, ambition, fulfilled, fulfillment, wealth and prosperity. It may indicate emotional fulfillment as perhaps entering into happiness that is long overdue. And what I love about that is once again, remember where does happiness come from? It doesn't come from external circumstances. It comes from you. You bring the happiness to the situation. Happiness never comes from the situation. It can't. It cannot come from the situation. You bring the happiness to the situation. If you can really see that, then the whole entire world becomes your happy place. Because you're not saying that, well, I have to go do this and this is, you know, something I perhaps I don't want to do because I don't like doing it. Instead, you can bring that presence of joy and of happiness to the situation that you're in. And in doing so, not only do you bring happiness, you are bringing provisioning for all, not only for yourself. So we have to remember that as we begin to step into the presence, uh, we really step into divine providence, which is all my needs will be met. And it's not met by you. It's not met by the body. Because once again, if we go back to presence, it's not the body itself doesn't make the money. The body the, itself does not make you happy. What it is instead is it's not what you do. It is how you are in that situation. Because let's say you're a car salesman, okay? And let's say that you are in the mindset that your body has to make this money. And so you are out there, you are trying to get 
everyone and just trying to grab it all, right? And, but then you see this other person, they're just kind of laid back and they're not really like worried about it. And then, you know, you're kind of running around and you're trying to like talk people up. And this person just seems to be so effortless. Like they just seem to get up out of the chair, walk over to someone and sell them a $50,000 car. Well, it's because they don't believe their bodies have to do anything. What they may be in the mindset of is, you know what? This person feels right to me. This feels good to me. So I'm gonna go this in this direction. And they just happen to come across the right customer who just happens to want a $50,000 car, who just happens, you know, and everything just flows and it's natural because they are not in the mindset of the body has to do this. They don't believe that. What they may believe instead is that, you know what? I'm led here, this is what I'm gonna do. And it may just be a completely unconscious action, but it can and does happen. You just have to get out of the way. And who do I mean, you? What I mean is the personality self, get it out of the way. The body identified, the body identification self, get that out of the way because that's what's stopping you be from becoming that divine instrument that can be used. And let's see our last message from this deck. All right, let's see. Ah, oh, beautiful. So it's the metamorphosis card, you know, how how beautiful, because it is a transformative process. When you do this, it really is transformational because you are switching from the body needs to do this, the body needs to do that, and you are switching instead to a consciousness of, I bring with me my happiness, I bring with me joy, I bring with me healing, I bring with me the entire universe. Wherever I go, I bring the divine with me. For I know that in that presence, I am a channel for that divinity. And as I let that be, as I let that flow through me and let it guide me, Everything I need is given to me without repose, without condition, without a need to pay it back. It simply just comes to me effortlessly. And I know for myself, I want to live effortlessly. I know that's something I want to embody more and more and more is that effortless flow and just saying, I'm here. Here I am. You know, just uh, let me be used. I let go of what I think I think and think I know and who I need to be and simply allow the divine to inform me. And in doing so, it just, life flows and it flows easily. But it is a metamorphosis. It is a process that you must go through yourself and when I say yourself, once again, I mean letting that personality self go a little bit more. Letting that body identified self go a little bit more. Each and every day, just a little bit, not a lot, just one little bit at a time. By simply maybe asking spirit, simplest way I can give to you guys, spirit, what would you have me wear today? Super simple, super easy, and it gets the personality out of the way. It gets the pattern that you've gotten into out of the way, and it lets the divine, the pattern disruptor, if you will, really come in and give you a boost. So that's our first set of messages. Now we're going to go... <clears throat> excuse me, to the Oracle of the Angels. We're going to see what beautiful affirmations... 
can go with these beautiful messages that we have received thus far. Oh, wow, beautiful. So card number 19, application. So it is about putting this into practice. It's time to stop thinking about, wow, I really want spirit to guide me, or wow, it would be really nice for spirit to guide me. And it's about putting it into application. It's about doing it on a consistent basis. Instead of think just thinking about it, it's about really applying it to every situation in your life. Not only is it about doing it in every situation, it's about being open and receptive to the voice for spirit, which is the voice that is within you. You know, so many people may say that, well, I don't hear the voice. It's not that you don't hear the voice. Right now, the voice may just be covered over by the old patterns that are in place that you have yet to let go of. And so we must be open and receptive before that voice can speak to us and we must invite it because if you don't invite it it can't impede in your free will if you want more of the same you know that same old voice that's been guiding you then that's absolutely fine the divine says okay it, it doesn't shame you it doesn't blame you it doesn't say you're a terrible person it just says okay so what we have to do is we have to invite that other we have to invite that voice of truth into our lives and we have to continue to move towards the light. We have to continue to keep on that path. And as we do, we realize something very, very integral that you are a divine co-creator. You are one with the divine. You have always been and you will always be the light. That's what you are. That's what you've always been. That's what you'll always be. And you'll begin to hear that beautiful inner calling. And, you know, as you start to follow spirit, as you start to follow those prompts, as you start to apply it on a consistent basis, not just, you know, when it's convenient, not just when things are going good, but on a consistent basis, consistently, then you'll start to move into harmony. Okay, not balance, because balance means there is this and there is that. Harmony is the synergistic union of all things working together for good, which then leads you to this beautiful inner peace, because you realize that what's most important isn't about the things, isn't about what you do, isn't about what you identify with. You begin to realize what is really important is that you are a divine child. All your needs are met, but you must dive into that because right now during this time, it does not seem as if all needs will be met. During this time, it seems like this is a time of trial and tribulation. This isn't a time of trial and tribulation. What it is a time of is great release. It is a time of seeing where you have identified yourself with certain concepts that you are not. We all have to go through it. I will tell you, I went through my own conceptual death. I've actually done it twice. Time number one was when I left the daycare. I worked at a daycare from the age of 18 to the age of 30. I had so identified myself with a teacher that I went into a depression for, oh goodness, I don't even, I want to say like five months where every day was bleak, every day was terrible, and every day I just wanted to hide. I didn't want to face the world. I was, because the concept of who I thought I was had crumbled had crumbled away and I didn't know who I was without that concept and it showed me so much that I had identified myself with this role as a daycare teacher 
and that I had not only identified myself as that role, that I had said that's the only way that I can ever make money. That's the only way I can live in this world is if I do that and if I don't do that, then oh my God, I'm a terrible, awful person. I have no use to society. That is what I thought as that concept of who I thought I was crumbled away. You know, and of course, I learned that I had much more to give to the world in a different way. And that's all it was. It was a different way. That way was done. I had learned the lessons that I needed there. And now, this is where I am now. But the second time that I had that conceptual death was when I stopped doing all the free readings. When I, when I really wanted to move more into assisting people with the spiritual principles of A Course in Miracles. I had been so devoted to, you know, let's do the cards and let's do that and, you know, so forth and so on. And there came a point in that new age um, journey, if you will, that I kind of hit a plateau. And I was kind of like, okay, there's nothing else. This is it. And you know, I didn't like that. I, I basically felt like I had reached the top of a mountain and I was like, okay, well now what? There's no more mountain. And what I had realized is once again, all of those beliefs kept me in a box and I had to let them all go. And it was scary. It was terrifying. I didn't think anyone was going to want to come and, you know, have a miracle mindset call with me. When I got that guidance, I was like, that's no, this doesn't make any sense. People aren't going to want this. But once again, people came, people signed up for it, and it was wonderful and beautiful. And, you know, this leads us back to surrender, letting go of everything you think you think and think you know. The moment that you think you know everything about a certain subject, about a certain person, about a concept of yourself, is the moment that you need to look and you need to say, whoa, okay. Let me let, I got to let some of this go. I got to let some of this go. Because then the divine can't fill you. If you think you know everything about something, then how can there be any room for the divine to inform you of even more? Because there's always more that you do not know. Because really, in truth, we don't know anything. And we have to be willing to admit that to ourselves. Our society doesn't necessarily allow us to, to feel like that's safe because it says, you know, the more, you know, knowledge is power, the more you know. And it makes us feel like we're bad people if we don't know. And if we have to ask for help, if we have to ask for information. And actually, that's the best way to be, is to really realize you don't know anything at all. And it's okay. So, you know, once again, this leads us into that surrender. And that is what my June 13th Zoom workshop is all about. Learning about surrender. Learning what surrender is. How can we surrender? And, you know, what are the benefits of surrendering? And what I've just told you are some of them. But surrender is the key to a life of happiness and bliss and joy because you have let go of all you think you think and all you think you know. So that is our reading for this week. I thank you for joining me. I thank you for being here. If you're interested in a Miracle Mindset Monday or in the workshop that I just talked about, feel free to go over to my website, awakeningmiracles.org. I thank you. And be in the presence of love today. Forget all you think you think and all you think you know and become that clear channel. Become that clear channel because you already are it. It's just you have a lot of stuff in the way. So let some of that stuff go today. <laughs>